Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about schistosomiasis, the disease caused by the parasite schistosoma. And we're going to talk about what are some of the symptoms of schistosomiasis, we're going to talk about how it's diagnosed, and finally we're going to talk about how it's treated. So to begin, what is schistosomiasis? Well, again, it is a disease caused by an infection of a parasitic blood fluke, or schistosomia. And this disease is also known as bilharziasis. And it is estimated that more than 200 million people worldwide are infected with schistosomiasis. And about 200,000 deaths are attributed to schistosomiasis per year. And most infected individuals are actually asymptomatic. Now here's a picture of the schistosomia parasitic blood fluke. And individuals are infected with the blood fluke in contaminated water. So when individuals such as children and adults wade through the waters, they can be infected by the schistosomia blood flukes. Now there are five different species of schistosoma blood fluke that can cause schistosomiasis and each has a different geographical range. The first one is schistosoma mansoni. And schistosoma mansoni is located in Africa, Middle East, Caribbean, and South America. The next one is schistosoma japonicum. And schistosoma japonicum is located in China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Another species is known as Schistosoma mekongji, and this species is found in Cambodia. Another species is Schistosoma hematobium, and this species is found in Africa and the Middle East. And this one in particular is involved in genitourinary infection. And the last one is Schistosoma intercalatum, and Schistosoma intercalatum is found in the Congo, Gabon, and Cameroon. So here is a diagram from the CDC on the life cycle of Schistosoma. So if we start at the egg stage, the eggs can be carried in the feces and urine from infected individuals. And these eggs can be released into water and then hatched into what we call myricidia. Myricidia can then penetrate into snail tissue, so the myricidia can then penetrate into its intermediate host, the snail. Eventually, what we call sporocysts begin to accumulate in the snail, and then cercaria are released from the snail and into the water, and these cercaria are free-swimming. And these are what can actually penetrate and they can penetrate into the skin. So when the person is walking through the water, the cercaria can enter and penetrate into the skin. When the cercaria penetrate into the skin, they lose their tail and become a schistosomale. The schistosomale can then enter the circulation of the infected individual, migrate to the portal blood in the liver, and then mature into adults, whereby they, the adult worms can then migrate into the mesenteric venules of the bowel and rectum. They lay eggs and then these eggs can be shed in the stool and then into some water source and then the cycle can begin again. And that completes the life cycle of the schistosoma parasitic blood fluke. So when an individual is infected with a schistosoma parasite, what are some of the symptoms? Well, in an acute infection, which typically occurs in travelers going to some of these affected regions, the individuals can get what we call a swimmer's itch or an itchy rash from the uh, penetration of cercari into the skin. And it can look something like this. So you can get this rash if you've uh, been in contaminated waters. And during the acute period of infection, we can see this uh, syndrome known as acute schistosomiasis syndrome or katayama fever and this um, we'll talk about this in another lesson but this is due to an immune reaction to these parasites and can lead to a different subset of symptoms. Now most of the symptoms we talk about in schistosomiasis is due to a chronic infection and the chronic infection is due to an ongoing exposure of the parasites and their uh, produced eggs and the disease severity itself is related to the number of eggs and the tissue distribution of the parasites and the eggs. Now depending on 
how many eggs there are in the intestinal tract, we can see different types of symptoms within the intestinal tract. Some of them include a chronic or intermittent abdominal pain. These individuals can also experience poor appetite. They can have diarrhea. They can have intestinal bleeding. And the diarrhea and intestinal bleeding can lead to a iron deficiency anemia. Some of the other symptoms of schistosomiasis are related to the haplatosplenic system. So we've talked about how the worms can migrate to the uh, portal system of the liver, and this can lead to several important symptoms in these patients. One is hepatomegaly, so the liver enlarges in some of these patients. There can be periportal fibrosis. There can be portal hypertension. Uh, the portal hypertension is due to just an accumulation of uh, these parasites within the portal system leading to an increase or build up in the portal pressure and the portal hypertension from the uh, parasite burden can lead to splenomegaly due to a um, backup of venous return back into the spleen leading to splenomegaly. So we call this hepatosplenic schistosomiasis. Another system that can be infected is the genitourinary system, and this can lead to a genitourinary schistosomiasis. And this genitourinary symptoms can be um, usually related to an infection with schistosoma hematobium. And this can lead to uh, infertility in some patients. It can lead to an increased risk for HIV infection in hematuria. And it's important to realize that in these cases, Eggs can be also excreted in the urine, so the eggs can be released, leading to lesions, and this is, can be a reason why we see blood in the urine, hematuria, and can also lead to increased risk of HIV infection. Another system that can be affected is the pulmonary system, and the parasite burden, if they are located within the pulmonary system, it can lead to an increase in pressure in the system leading to a pulmonary hypertension, can lead to core pulmonale, can lead to dyspnea, can lead to cardiac enlargement, and it can lead to pulmonary arterial dilatation, which is typically seen in the end stage. Another system that can be affected is the nervous system, and it can lead to what we call neuroschistosomiasis. And this is, again, due to the parasite burden, and it can lead to spinal cord lesions. And it typically if causes myelopathy more so than cerebral disease, but you can still see symptoms of cerebral disease as well. And other symptoms include anemia, malnutrition, growth retardation, and general disability. And we've talked about some of the reasons why these symptoms can occur as well. So now that we know some of the symptoms of schistosomiasis, how can we definitively determine if it is schistosomiasis or not? That comes down to diagnosis of the schistosomiasis. And it, so it's important to ask uh, travelers in particular if uh, what countries they've traveled to, if they've been into any of these affected regions. And it's also important to ask individuals from these countries if they've been um, wading through any open waters and um, if they've had any rash or any of the other symptoms that can fit with schistosomiasis. But with diagnosis, it's important to check serology. Um, so look for antibodies. That's particularly important in travelers. It's important to do a urinalysis. We've talked about how some uh, species can release their eggs in the urine. And it's important to do a PCR to check for parasite um, genetics. So it's important to check these four diagnostic criteria to see if these individuals are in fact infected with schistosoma parasites. And once we have determined if it is a schistosoma infection, what are some of the treatments? Well, the treatment for schistosomiasis is praziquantel or biltricide. So praziquantel is actually an anthelmintic or an anti-helminthic, um, anti-against helminthic. It's against these parasitic worms. So it is a drug that can uh, kill these parasitic worms. And a dose of typically 20 milligrams per kilogram um, is needed um, three times daily. Um, four to six hour intervals for one day would be the treatment for these individuals. So again, the treatment for schistosomiasis is praziquantel, an anti-helminthic, and we give it to the patient um, at a 20 milligram per kilogram dose, and we um, give this dose three times a day 
in about four to six hour intervals for one day. And that is the treatment for schistosomiasis. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on schistosomiasis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.